The roof raise is taking a little bit longer than expected because I have not been able to find C channel inserts. I'll post a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. C channel inserts to fit uh, inside where the weld is going to go to back the weld. Uh, and uh, a lot of the manufacturers, you know, like schoolie.com and California, not California, <laughs> Colorado Custom Coast Works, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I called a bunch of them and they're all super busy. So I'm trying to find some local fabricators here, uh, some local metal shop that could do it for me. Funny enough, we got the sheet metal on the way. So we'll probably get the sheet metal for the outside before we get the uh, securing mechanism is because the issue has to do with the gap inside of the hat channel. And I think other people out there who are doing roof raises may run into a similar problem. And I'll tell you about the different ways that you could potentially field it. You know, we do have a backup, but I'm hoping to go the way that I want to go first which requires less welding, less metal, less weight. So a lot of times you'll see people just uh, welding in tubular steel, but because I have custom hat channel here, I wanted to get an accurate measurement. Unfortunately, tubular steel will not fit perfectly here, so that's why we have to use the C channel in order to butt weld. So this is what a butt weld looks like. It's when you actually marry the two sections together and in order to do that without C-channel, we would have had to use a method here, which is inserting a shim. Okay, so we uh, had to sand down the rust. Uh-huh. And then we um, put mineral spirits on it. Yep. And it's not galvanized. It rusted really fast. It's mild steel. Yep. Omar, you want to explain what mild steel is? No, that's fine. They can, okay. they can Google it. Okay, and... Um, <laughs> So then mineral spirits is like, it makes it super oily. So Scott over here, he told us that you could wash it with uh, soap and water. And we were afraid of that because we thought it would be, it would get rusted. Mm -hmm. But apparently if you wash it and then immediately dry it, immediately dry it, then it'll be fine. Plus but it's a pretty hot day today. So it, yeah, it, most of the water evaporated. Exactly. And so you can use that or you can use brake fluid. Brake cleaner. Brake cleaner. Yeah. But that's not, you know. We didn't have brake cleaner. We didn't have brake cleaner. So then, so and then what's all this brown. brown stuff all over the place? So this stuff is to prevent rust. Yeah, this so we. rusty brown color is to prevent rust. Yeah, it just happens to be the same color as rust. This is a primer. Ideally, you want to put two coats, but it takes 24 hours for each coat. And uh, it takes three hours for it to dry. Yeah. So Because it has to so, cure after it dries. Yeah. So, so yeah, we still have to paint the backs of these. So this is going to be an on-running project for the next couple of days. And then we're also going to start uh, cutting the roof up. So that's the next bit. Hat channel. We've got all the hat channel laid out here. Uh, these are all been cut to 24 inches. And we've got our bracket system welded in place, as you can see. And anybody who's seen a YouTube video on how a roof raise works, they're going to... We're going to cut in between here, and then we're going to use these uh, bolts and washers to push up this threaded uh, rod, and that's going to help us lift the roof up. And then once there's a big gap there, then we're going to fill that gap in with all these pieces of metal. Uh, here you can see I just, uh, yeah, see, so I kind of weld it on the sides. Some of these welds are prettier than others. And then once we're done with uh, with this system, then we're just going to grind it right off um, and, and move on from there. So the, the big thing about the hat channel is that I had to wait to get inserts. So uh, the company of uh, a nice gentleman named uh, Kern sold me these uh, hat channels. He's got a company called uh, Chrome Yellow Corporation. They're based out of Colorado. Uh, so if you're looking for custom builds definitely check them out i'll link them and um but unfortunately it didn't come these are the exact same factory specs as this bluebird bus but it didn't come with uh anything to marry the uh cut pieces to each other so i went to a different company for that another great company called schoolie.com uh they're based out of north carolina and they have all types of good parts and uh they don't, they don't think they do custom builds anymore, but they sell mostly parts for custom builds. So they're a really good provider if you need stuff like what I got here. 
Um, and so now what I gotta do is I gotta take each one of these C channels and add them to all of my hat channel. These things are called hat channel because it kind of looks like a little top hat. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do now uh, in preparation for cutting the roof off tomorrow. I'll be honest, I'm kind of scared, but uh, we came this far, so. In order to get the bus level, we had to actually pull it with Phil's van. He's got an awesome lifted van that he calls Alice. And she's super powerful and she was able to drag my entire bus back to the flattest point so that we could be nice and level for the roof race. Omar, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm, I'm happy now that Phil's helping me. Guys, I was making mistakes because I'm super nervous. It's nice to have somebody who knows what they're doing. Oh, don't, don't make the accusations. <laughs> I've never raised a bus roof. Yeah. I think this is my first, so I'm honored. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a very talented fabricator, metal worker, and electrical engineer. So he's definitely a good guy to have on, the, on my side. Yeah. And this also is my big boo boo of the day. Owner of Awesome Possum. Yeah, yeah, everybody come check out Awesome Possum. What's the. So, the big mistake that I made was that I was meant to cut that, this cut here. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking at it and going, okay, don't make the mistake of cutting it in the same spot. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I kept saying it to myself over and over again. And then I was like, okay, time to make the cut. I sat down, made the cut. And halfway through the cut, I realized I did exactly what I told myself not to do. So, I like psyched myself out or something. But uh, we cut? thought we cut a heat, cut your fingers off. Yeah, I started screaming and cursing. Everybody thought I cut my fingers off. Yeah, it freaked but me out. Everybody ran over, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm just fucking mad at myself for being an idiot. But, you know, if we we're going to frame in a big window here, we would have to cut this out anyway, so. Yeah, okay then. I guess that's a window. Yeah. <laughs> it's like art. You have to just, like, go with the just mistakes. Embrace it, yeah. I mean, it could be patched and repaired, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, and so what are some of the next steps you have to go through? So right now what we're doing is we're going into the corners and we're removing the things that are binding, the last bit of hat channel, the mm -hmm. edges here that are holding everything in the place. The top, the roof up. Yeah, yeah. Basically it's a very, like the very corners. Mm -hmm. um, and once those are loose, then everything is free and they can just be lifted. So we got a couple bottle jacks here on the floor. Mm -hmm. that we're using to uh, help push the roof up. Um, well, basically the jacks are just an assistant. Mm -hmm. So the jacks are just gonna push, 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 and then we'll set all the bolts, and then we'll tighten it a little bit more, then we'll add new wood, then we'll jack some more. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of using them in conjunction with each other. And how do you make sure it's leveled? That um, it's not gonna measure. be- You gotta go back and measure, and measure, and measure, and measure. Okay, so you measure each wood or, or around a wood or something? Well, basically after we do it, we jack it up for a while, and then we measure the gap in between the two pieces. So today, the next thing we're doing here is figuring out what to cut here. So we need to cut somehow through this, like some kind of L shape, because we want to preserve the uh, door frame as much as possible. And same thing here, we got to make a cut. And then here, we got to make a cut. Once we make those cuts, then the bus is completely... And those back cuts are already, those are already made. And then all through here, I pulled the rivets out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's loose. So Phil just did this, he cut through that hat channel all the way and then also a segment of this so it's good to have another person that yeah. that's able one side you were able to lift with your yeah. uh, crowbar yeah exactly. and then he was able to cut it with what did this you is the fabled diablo blade which you heard me mention in another video 
uh, that goes in a reciprocating saw, which is what we used. Also sometimes called a sawzall. Well, this one broke within the first three seconds, so I ended up using a bunch of really cheap torch blades, and they worked great. We also needed to clean all of this uh, industrial glue off of the outside of the hat channel, and the best tool for that turned out to be a wire brush attached to a grinder. Um, I tried to use a heat gun, but it was ineffective. Mm -hmm. So this is just a good investment to have. Yeah, and we used this on John's roof raise and it was super easy. It just pushed right up. I almost wish I had two of them because the other bottle jack is just a regular shop one. Mm -hmm. This one can support 20 tons, so it'll it'll push the back end of this bus up. Like it's and how much is, are those 20 ton jacks? I like 50 bucks. Right? Oh, that's not bad. It's cheap, yeah. yeah. Considering how much it helped you. Yeah. One final step, we added some uh, improvised scaffolding on the inside in case of a catastrophic failure, uh, which we weren't expecting, but it's always good to be safe. And uh, now it's time to raise. Well, it's up. That's 24 inches raised from the original stock height of 10.6. So that makes our overall height now 12 foot 6 inches before we add any solar panels to the roof. Uh, that keeps us well within the legal limit and also gives us the amazing addition of 8 extra feet of ceiling height, which is amazing. Uh, the possibilities are going to be endless here. Here you can see that I just added some uh, paint. This is a Rust-Oleum uh, Rusty Metal Primer. That I uh, Same stuff that we added um, to the sheet metal, but this comes in a spray can. And we wanted to make sure I go ahead and protect all our welds. Uh, I'm so elated. I'm so excited and happy that this is finally accomplished. We've been struggling for so long. I just want to scream. Scream with me. Holy oh. 